you know, on a large scale, the technology to the public? Yeah, there are various time frames for different uh, goal sets. Uh, they, of course, depend on uh, the amount of resources that we have. But generally, uh, proving the effects beyond a shadow of a doubt has been our endeavor in the last five years. You can see, uh, in fact, if you go to John Searle Story's YouTube channel, you can see a progression of uh, Searle Magnetics and the things that we're trying to prove in terms of the concept. If, we're, if we had limited resources, we decided, okay, let's prove a piece of the concept. Can you print a sine wave uh, magnetic field on a piece of uh, circular material? Yes, you can. That is repeatable and undeniable. Uh, can you make a round magnet spin around another round magnet without stopping or flying off? Yes, that is provable in the mock-up. Uh, can you experience the eddy current gear effect from a drum of copper that is uh, put within a certain distance of a uh, magnetic roller? Yes, you can. And these things uh, prove unequivocally uh, the soil concept step by step. This is what we've been able to afford to do. The uh, steps that we'd like to take on uh, in the next months or so would be to uh, uh, build upon these items and get towards that ring and roller set. But I'm going to say something and then go over to John. Uh, what he did in the, in the early days, the roller and uh, ring sets were a slurry mixture of materials. The new way uh, that he wants to reproduce this is with a layered consistency, uh, separate layers, four layers of materials that uh, create the Searle effect. And uh, that specifically is so that that layered system can be moved directly into a mass production system. John, uh, talk a little bit about the slurry mixture and the layered mixtures, the slurry from the past and the layered mixtures in the present. Well, first of all, I was in the right place at the right time. I had all the equipment except to convert one of the magnetizers. The second thing was that just one raw material was missing from their use, which was the rare earth. That's all I had to pay for was the rare earth. That was 32 cents a kilo. You need a kilo for the first plate. So we can see how cheap it was to, for me to have an SEG made. Now it was made in a slurry format. And this meant it took, for the whole process, you were looking at just one segment at one whole day to create. So you need eight for the first roller set, so that meant you was going to spend eight days to make one roller set. And you want 12 for the first plate, you want 22 in the next plate, and you want 32 on the final plate. So you can see with that, and then the plates had to be done. We were looking at a three month time slot to make one SEG. That is impossible to meet the market demands today. If this will have to be mass production method. And to do that, we had to rethink on how on earth could we convert this old system into something that would run happily in a mass production format. So in the end, I came up to the idea that what we need was to make the three materials as tubes and the fourth one as a solid uh, material bar. So we just take them in long lengths, chop them to the width we want, and just machine them clean. And we'd be able to press them together and this would mean we could speed up the number of SEGs we could make per day. But first, we have to find out exactly what each material is capable of doing. And this is what we've been proving as at uh, here in California, which um, is the, the American version of California, not any other countries. <laughs> and here we have proven that everything I've said in the past is absolutely true. And we've added a few more bits of knowledge which I never had in the past because we did not have the, uh, the equipment to test. 
So at the moment, I've given green light to the process uh, to proceed forward, and I see no problems at this stage. Well, that's good to hear. Um, there is a lot of pessimism as to uh, what the government's really up to, if they're actually going to allow this into existence. How would you, this is a hypothetical, say we had an emergency where there was a power outage, where we saw some sort of destabilization of our government structure. What would be the most mindful way to still go about educating people about this technology? And the other part of that question is what tools uh, would you recommend that people acquire that have an interest in maybe building something like this themselves if they have the blueprints or they have the information? If we had some sort of a systematic breakdown of government oppression and legislation where we were able to build it ourselves, um, what would be the, the, the best way to begin? John, if there was a systematic breakdown in governments or a power outage uh, that destabilized things, how would you move forward educating people about the SEG? And can you also teach people to build one on their own? Well, first of all, the cost to build one on your own is going to cost you about $3 million or more dollars to make. So that's said. Uh, unless you are an extremely rich person, that's something to forget. Next thing is, it's the danger of the magnetizer. It is not a thing that somebody without the knowledge and skills should be touching. Because if that wave gets out of the building, you can save that for about 25, 50 miles, all electrical components would be knocked out and you would have to go outside that area to rebuy the equipment that you need to replace. So it's something that we have to handle with experts. We've got to have real experts who know what they're doing uh, to handle this type of magnetizing system. But it, it's, it's a shame people think that the government will stop this technology. To, no, they're begging the poor people to clean up their mess. And they find that it's a costly job to do. This would be, in the long run, in mass production, a much cheaper way to clean up that mess. And therefore, the poor people ought to be happy if we could make SEGs large enough to help to supply the grids so they can switch out the old system of production of power. That infrastructure is now in place and would be the quickest way to get clean energy to people. But at the same time, all new houses should have their own SEGs, and eventually we replace all the old houses, one street at a time, to come off the grid. It's a big job, but it's not impossible. There's nothing impossible except that the state of your mind makes it so. John, when when the uh, when the electrical utility companies in the UK became aware of the the potential disruption to their business from the Searle effect generator, did they did they pressure you in any way or or cause you some interference? John, the question is. <clears throat> Did the utility companies in the UK pressure you over this? Well, what they did, they would not support or even take notice of the system. What I was trying to get across the air, they just said impossible. Uh, here's one. Uh, to the best of your awareness or knowledge, has your technology been stolen from you? John, has, to the best of your knowledge, has your technology been stolen from you? Well, let's put it this way. <laughs> the electric boards confiscated it. And, uh, it is, and, of course, over the years, we've had the technology stolen. But what good has it been to them? They don't understand it. They think they can back-engineer it, but you cannot back-engineer it. Mm -hmm. So they steal all the equipment and think they stopped me from working. Yes, they have stopped me working, but 
they can't do nothing because they don't know how to do it. People got some idea that you can just go back engineer the SEG. But um, I haven't found anyone who can so far. John, many, many in the, the public, um, you know, have made claims of seeing, uh, you know, unidentified flying objects that are silent and that have uh, very unique and advanced uh, maneuvering capabilities and velocities. Is it possible that, that the Searle effect generator uh, was back engineered, if not for its energy effect, but for its, its anti-gravity levitation effects? John, that question was uh, that many people in the public have seen UFOs and objects in the sky that move in uh, similar manners to what you've described. Uh, was it possible that the SEG and IGV were back engineered and perhaps they're up there? Well, first of all, as I stated, you, this is something you cannot back engineer because every atom is a complete SEG. And to find out how that's done, to split that atom, to find out how it's done, you lost all the data, you lost it all. So it's not possible to back engineer. But I know in the past, maybe by struggle that, some people did see the IGVs, or celebrity discs, as we call them. Well, we do know two policemen certainly did. I know a reverend uh, also knew uh, and saw one of them. And we know also an artist who was actually drawing an area in Derby happened to look up and saw one and draw it in the picture. And eventually he found me and gave me the copy of it and dated it and signed it. Well, we only have um, you for a couple more minutes. Um, we're going to uh, allow you some time to say anything else you'd like to add to this. But one thing I'm curious about, I know there's a lot of people watching the show with great interest and they want to learn more about educating themselves about free energy and things of that nature. What websites or books <clears throat> can you recommend to get people started in looking more into this direction? John, what sites, websites, and books do you recommend for people to get started in learning about your work and in uh, uh, learning about what you've done? Well, on our websites, uh, the latest book, because for three months now I've not been able to uh, continue the writing, uh, but uh, the intention was to put on there the, a book that would explain how I learned, and from that learning, how the SEG took place, how it developed, how we're now thinking. All the proof will be there, proving that scientists are wrong. They have held up this project since 1946 by saying, A, that you cannot print a magnetic wave on metal. B, if you did, the rollers would fall off. And if it did stay on, if you try to make a move, they just fly off, which we demonstrate today with ease at our lab. That's impossible. They don't fly off. They race around, and they work, as I state, they do. You take off, increase load, they will speed up to deliver that load. And if you take the load down, they slow down. This we can prove dead easy. And any case, I'm not concerned about what the scientists say because their track record is not very good. Every invention made by man that we use today, and I don't know what would happen if they suddenly disappeared, the public wouldn't be able to cope. They wouldn't know what had happened. We don't even think about the trouble they had in producing that project. How the scientists knocked them down some would say the court and charge for fraud and deception, yet we are only too pleased to have that product. Take AC, electricity. Tesla went through hell to give us that, but it didn't stop. Or otherwise, just think of it. If you didn't have AC, electricity,